Officer Dan here with some thoughts. This time we're going to be talking about pro drifting. Uh, Formula D. Oh my god. Some people hate it. Anyway, we're going to be talking about pro drifting. Nick Stuckey brought up a good point about why people hate FD when they can't actually do it, um, etc, etc, etc. I want to make a couple of videos on this subject actually. So this one I want to talk about getting into pro and actually making it happen. There's a lot that goes into it and a lot of stuff I think that people don't think about. Luckily, I had a super successful career doing so. <laughs> uh, but I learned a lot and I want to portray those learnings to you. So you want to do pro. Bam! You've made your ranks up through amateur drifting all the way to pro-am. You killed it in pro-am and you got your license. Congratulations, you're now a professional driver. So, uh, what are the next steps? What do you do? post license getting um, at whatever series you've done across the country. Based off of my experience of sucking 100% bad at Formula Drift, I think there are three major things that you need in order to succeed in Pro 2 to kind of move up to Pro 1 or stay in Pro 2 or do whatever you want to do in your professional drifting career. The first one is going to be money. Boom! The root of all evil controls pretty much everything in drifting and you have to have a good budget. Um, I used all of my own money. I took out my 401k. Horrible idea. Jesus Christ, what the fuck was I thinking? To do Formula D. But hey, I was pursuing my dream and it did open up a lot of doors for me in other aspects of my life, but that's a different video altogether. So money, um, you're gonna need to get this from somewhere. Pro 2 is four rounds. You're gonna probably need five to $10,000 per round uh, to get there for logistics, for transportation, for flights, if you're needing to fly people in, for food, for spare parts, for hard cards, for truck maintenance, car maintenance, for pay for your team, for tools, for anything else that you might think of. It, it, it adds up really, really quickly and is a lot more than you might think it is. Everything to do with your program. I saved all my receipts and maybe I'll add those up at some, at some point, but I think I just get depressed and cry myself to sleep instead. Um, so anyway, back to the money. Now you can get this from family, you can get this from your inheritance, you can get this from the mafia, you can get this from, God, many, many other places. Anyway, um, or you can get it from sponsors. Now this is the hard part. Uh, this might be a whole other video as well, but sponsorship is a difficult, difficult thing and it is a full-time job. Um, you need to be hustling 24-7, trying to find new companies. Uh, the easiest way to get money in Formula D is to go with a company that's not in drifting. The people in drifting know that it's kind of not worth it to give people money because they usually get no return on their investment. So it's very important that you show a company that you can actually give them a return on their investment by creating content by making Instagram posts, by making Facebook posts, by appearing for them for commercials, by doing guest appearances, by doing ride-alongs. Uh, anything you can do for a sponsor to make them feel special, wanted, and appreciated for helping you out. Um, like I said, that's a whole different video. If you can get sponsors to pay for everything, that is the hands down, of course, best way to do it. But that is a very difficult thing, especially coming into Pro 2, which doesn't have the exposure that Pro 1 has. Um, so you've, you've got a budget locked down, um, you know exactly what you're going to be spending, you're ready to rock and roll. What do you need next? And this is all part of that triangle of things. Triangle. I guess that's a triangle. Uh, this is part of the, the trident of things that you need. And if one of these things fails, then the whole thing falls apart. Ask me how I know because at least three of them have failed. Okay, so next up on the, the important list, you need a team. Off the bat, you're gonna need a mechanic or two. You're gonna need some sort of a team manager to do all the logistics, keep your mind off of all that stuff. You're gonna need a media guy, and you're gonna need a spotter. Now, what does a team have in pro that it doesn't have in maybe pro-am or amateur events? So usually you just bring your buddy with you, your faithful mechanic who did kind of everything. Maybe he would take some crappy cell phone videos of you drifting on the course. In pro, it becomes a little bit different. So if you are managing your own team like I did, running logistics, so doing the flights, doing the bookings of hotels, doing shopping, doing the food, doing, if you're doing everything on that and then you drive to the event yourself and then you're tired as hell when you get there, you're worn out, you don't 
you're not in the zone that you should be. In my humble opinion, you need at least one mechanic. Two mechanics would be better. If you break two things on the car or you have a transmission that needs to be changed or a motor, it's better to have two sets of hands on the car at the same time to get all that stuff fixed. For me, um, for more than one round, I had to borrow people from other teams because something would happen. They would miss their flights or they would have to go home or they didn't show up in the first place or they quit the team or I scared them away or whatever happened. I ended up having to have Jesse Wood, my media guy, be my spotter, be my mechanic and be my media guy. And that, that sucks for him too. So make sure that your team is dialed and make sure it's the same people every single time that go with you. So you guys develop a rhythm when you get to events. You set everything up, you get the car dialed in, you go. You take notes on the track for next time you get to there when you do the next round for next year. And possibly some sort of team manager to help you with A, sponsorships and B, logistics. So that you as a driver can concentrate on driving and not have to worry about all of that other stuff because it is super stressful, especially when crew members start missing flights and etc. Anyway, that's a whole different story as well. Um, so the team is very, very, very important for Formula D, especially having a spotter that knows what they're doing. The spotter's job is to make you not suck as a driver, but his job is also to pay attention to all of the other drivers in the field and watch how they're driving. So when you go up against them in tandem battle, you, he can say, hey, this guy enters really fast and hits the brakes hard. This guy enters really fast and goes low down onto the bank or high up onto the bank or hits this clipping point every single time. So go real close to him and make him make that mistake. Um, little things like that. So spotter is super, super important. They should have driven at least pro-am, hopefully pro. There's plenty of pro three drivers out there um, that you can hire and we will give you some great advice on driving. Oh, sick message. Um, and that leads to the most important member of the team. And I say this with the utmost respect to my Jesse Wood, um, a media guy. He is the guy that's gonna actually make you look good. So if you do break your car, if you do fail miserably, you don't make top 32, you don't make top 16, um, he is there to document the process so that you still have something to show your sponsors. Like, hey, we were here, we promoted you guys in a positive light. Um, people still got a kick out of us. We still interacted with fans. We, we did what we were supposed to do. We just didn't happen to make it this time. Or he's there to document you taking the championship or he's there to document everything about what you're doing in pro so that you can have all of that to give to your sponsors to keep them sponsoring you. So always, always, always bring a media guy. And if that media guy is lucky, they'll blow up like Jesse Wood did and end up being one of the top guys at Donut Media and making all sorts of rad content with F1 drivers and not Officer Dan. Anyway, so having a team, number two, super, super important. And number three on the list, and it might seem like something stupid, but reliable transportation, a reliable truck and a reliable trailer. I know quite a few times where guys would be driving across country, the truck would break and they'd be out. They couldn't make it to the round. Um, Luckily, I didn't have any problems with that. I didn't even have a flat tire in two years of doing Formula D, which is crazy. Um, and my truck ran the whole time, basically, except for in the very last end of Pro 2, but that's a stupid Dodge thing, whatever. Um, so reliable transportation. If you have to lease a truck, lease a truck. Um, it's still cheaper than buying something that's really, really nice. Um, so make sure that your truck and trailer is dialed. Now, if any of those three things fail, you're going to have a bad time. For me, all of those things together kind of just held me down. And I never really got a chance to actually even do anything in Formula D. And it's my own fault, 100% my own fault. I was a dick to some of the guys on my team. I chose the wrong people to be on the team in the first place. And then I had somebody different at every single round. Um, which didn't help at all. I finally kind of learned this at Pro 2 when I brought the guys from Motiva with me where I had a dedicated manager and spotter. I had a dedicated mechanic and we were getting it to work and then I ran out of money, which was number one on the list. Anyway, so those are my list of things that you need to succeed in Formula D. If you can get all three of those things to work, you are gonna fucking slay. Anyway. Those are my thoughts, Officer Dan out. Got some thoughts for you. So this time, Jesus Christ, the gas, got some gas.